the number one grip position in terms of strength transfer to all other grips and into climbing performance. Yeah. What? With fingerboarding, this is a really big subject area. There's lots of different protocols that you can use, different grip positions, intensities, volumes. It's a, it's a big subject area. But today, what I want to focus on is the three main grip positions which I think are the most useful to incorporate in some manner into your fingerboard training. It may not be this year, it may be next year. And obviously there is always some kind of variation which you want to take into account in terms of your training history and your climbing level. But these three grip positions that I'm gonna go through today in this video, I think are really important. They all have good reasons for why you want to look at potentially using them within your training. And I think they have a very high degree of specificity to performance within rock climbing. So the three areas that I think we need to look at when we're addressing grip position training in fingerboarding is one, the level of specificity. Two is the robustness of the soft tissue structures and three is the stra that transfer of strength training into your performance. So if we think about, first of all, the specificity element, we need to be training grip positions which are specific to performance on rock. So it makes relatively little sense to train or spend a lot of time training grip positions which you hardly ever use in climbing performance. Yes, there is an applicability for some of those more unusual, rarer grip positions in some scenarios. But really what we want to do is take the broadest possible uh, sort of approach on the grip positions so that there's a level of specificity and transfer to the climbing you're doing. So we're gonna look at that first of all in these three grip positions. Secondly is that we want to think about the level of robustness within our soft tissue structures in the hand and the fingers are there certain scenarios under which we know there's a likelihood that we might drop a finger off a hold? So for example, you'll see that we're gonna talk about the pinky finger or certain angles of uh, grip or angles in the position of the fingers on certain holds that we want to build a robustness for, a preparation in terms of those soft tissue structures that they can operate at a high intensity in those specific grip positions. So again, this relates back to the choices that we're gonna use within these three main grip positions. And then lastly, is that the choices that we make on those positions that we use the most within our training, they have the highest transfer to strength across the board. So it makes very little sense to spend all of your time training on monos, for example, if it has very poor transfer into all the other grip positions that you're gonna be using and climbing. So let's take broad strokes and use the things that have the best transfer across into other areas of your climbing. So let's go straight in at the start on what we have found Lattice to be the number one grip position that the vast majority of climbers who are adjusted and adapted to fingerboard training should be using, and that is the half crimp grip position. And importantly within this grip position is that when we're looking at our hands or our fingers on the board is that we're really emphasizing the ability to be able to get this index finger at a 90 degree grip position so that all three of our first fingers on that board are close to a 90 degree angle. And the, the little finger depends on the sort of morphology and the, the climber can be quite straight to slightly more uh, bent and this is very different to that open forefinger grip position where we have a straight index finger. And this grip position is just such an important position for training. It has a really high degree of specificity towards uh, performance on rock. It has a really good range transfer. So that's halfway between an open grip position here to a full crimp. So we're sort of in the mid range of it. So it has a better transfer outside of that range and it builds up a robustness in the pulleys, in the fingers, so that they're more able to withstand um, levels of force and intensity in both a full crimp and a more open position. So it's all half, uh, half four open grip position, which is like that there. So you can still see that those two fingers are at 90 degrees. So it has a specificity 
and a robustness transfer into that grip position there. And also lastly is that this position, the four finger half crimp grip position is the number one grip position in terms of strength transfer to all other grips and into climbing performance. So with two hands on, we're gonna be 90 degrees in the index finger, middle finger and ring finger. And you can see with me, my little finger is really quite straight and extended out. I can force it into a more bent position, but that feels slightly unnatural to me and I have to rotate my wrist around into that position. So for me, it's more natural to come into a straighter pinky position. So that's number one, half crimp grip position. We love it. The vast majority of the people that we work with you work in this half crimp grip position. And one of the questions I've been asked a number of times is, well, what would happen if you almost exclusively trained someone in this half crimp grip position? Would it still transfer to real rock? And the answer is yes. It is such a good fingerboard grip position for training. Really, really useful. Number two is the three finger drag. So this is where we have three fingers on the hold, little finger is dropped off, and we've got a much more open position on the board. So as to place my fingers on this rung here, as you can see, three fingers almost completely open, index and ring completely open for me, but the middle finger still has some bend in it. Again, this is gonna be very dependent on the size of your hands, your fingers, the length, uh, that sort of individual morphology. So uh, really the kind of key thing is to sort of hang on the joint structures as much as possible on this particular hang. And one of the reasons why I think it's really important to be doing this three finger drag position where we've got our, ring, our little finger dropped down off the hold is that if we are taking a hold in a four finger grip position, if it's a half crimp, or a more open position, when we reach the limit on our moves, we quite often find that the little finger will drop off that hold and we will end up really loading that ring finger and we can see injuries occur in this circumstance. So the logic becomes that if we include this grip position, our three finger drag position in high intensity fingerboard work is that we build a specificity and a robustness in that position and also make that ring finger more sort of prepared and adapted to the kind of forces that we may well put when we drop that little finger on. And we all know that that definitely happens with a number of us, that little finger dropping off the hold. So again, a really good grip position to use within training. Lastly is I'm gonna show you a third uh, or two um, grip positions which fit within the third category. And this is where we split our uh, fingers. And we're gonna talk about a front three and back three grip position. And with this, this is definitely a more advanced grip position within fingerboarding. And I would say that you want to start to look at exploring and using these within your training if you've got a really good history of fingerboarding. You've been doing this not just for a few weeks and trying things out, you wanna be doing this for months and years and you wanna be a bit more of a higher level climber before doing these because they're quite intense, but we have found that these are very, very good at transfer to other grip positions, overall strength, and also building up the robustness of the hands to certain grip positions, especially when we're grabbing pockets where we can only thrip three fingers in, but we're still having to half crimp or full crimp. So first one is the front three half crimp. So it's like a half crimp with your four fingers, but you're dropping your little finger off, but you're working on having the index finger and the ring finger at 90 degrees. This feels intense on your ring finger. So build up very slowly, be really cautious with this and don't overdo this grip position. A lot of people struggle with this one. So three fingers, all at 90 degrees. And you'll notice with me that my ring finger, because of the length of my uh, fingers, sits more close to perhaps that's probably about 110, 120 degrees. And that feels really natural for me. 
I can close up my grip position and get it much closer to 90 degrees on a hang, but that feels risky and it doesn't feel comfortable for those that grip. So I'm not likely to train at a really high intensity. So I stay away from that. I focus more on the index and the middle finger being at 90 degrees. The other th the split grip position with three fingers is the back three crimp grip position. This transfers or happens to transfer very well into full crimp as well. And with this, we're dropping the index finger off and we're just hanging on those back three fingers. My preference on this is to make sure that the middle finger is at 90 degrees and that we're not going into a drag position and really opening up on those back three. I'm staying at more of a 90 degree position of that uh, index, sorry, not index finger, middle finger on this one. Another important point to note with this particular grip position is that if you open out and you start dragging and getting very close to open on the middle finger, you increase the strain and stress across the lumbricals in the hand. And I think you become a little bit more prone to uh, injury within the lumbricals. Um, so try and stay at a slightly more open position so you're not really pulling down and bringing that index finger really low and increasing the stress across those lumbricals. So that for me is a really nice, comfortable back three grip position. So there you have it. Those are mine or our favorites or most used three fingerboard grip positions that we find have an excellent transfer into strength across the board, really high degree of specificity for general climbing and also help improve the robustness of those soft tissue structures across the hand and the fingers so that you're able to perform better for longer, for more years, and hopefully be more injury free. Yeah.